Hey, I'm Reba McIntyre, and you're watching Taste of Country. It's Billy Dukes with Taste of Country, and Reba McIntyre, kind enough to play Wikipedia, fact or fiction. Can't wait. Have you ever checked out your Wikipedia page? Well, I looked at it. I didn't check it out. I just kind of saw it was there. How accurate do you take it to be? Do you feel it's a pretty good summarization of I your would, life and I career? would think it would be pretty accurate, yeah. It's very lengthy. Is it? Yo, yeah. I have 45 questions. So oh, Lord. You brought a Snickers bar. Okay. No, no, no. We'll just talk for a few minutes here. and We'll have to call <laughs> lunch in. <laughs> okay, so these first few are pretty simple. They're pretty obvious. Um, fact or fiction. Uh, name, Reba Nell McIntyre. Correct. We said fact. Oh, fact. Okay. Sorry. Good. Um, I've already born messed up. March 28th in McAllister, Oklahoma. Correct. Fact. Okay. Mother's name, Jacqueline, and father was Clark. She was named for her maternal grandmother, Reba Brassfield. Fact. Other famous Rebas, Reba, the, the male lady from Pee Wee's Playhouse. I didn't know that. <laughs> really? I don't know. And question mark on that one. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not sure. That either. wasn't in there, was it? No, no it's on okay. there. It's on Wikipedia somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> grew up on a 7,000 acre farm in Chalky, Oklahoma. Fiction. Fiction. 8,000 acres. Oh, well. One of Reba's early jobs on that farm, castrating bulls. Fiction. I never castrated a bull. I would, uh, you know, hold the bucket for daddy, but I never, I, I gave the shots. I was, I vaccinated. I never castrated. <laughs> Honestly. Guess. <laughs> It began your career as a high school student in the Kiowa High School Band. Kiowa. Kiowa. I was in junior high when that started. Uh, Susie was just getting into junior high, and I was getting out of junior high. Paik was a junior, junior in uh, high school. Okay. And it's the Kiowa Cowboy High School Band. Um, on car rides home from their father's rodeo shows, the McIntyre siblings were taught songs, this is a long one, uh -huh. and learned their own harmonies, eventually forming a vocal group called the Singing McIntyres with Brother Paik and younger sister Susie, her older sister Alice, did not participate. Uh, part fiction, part fact. Mama was the one that taught us how to sing harmony. We didn't teach ourselves. Okay. So, and all the rest is correct. And fact. And, and, and just a, a, an aside, why didn't Alice participate? Alice was always the one that was outside running barrels and taking care of the horses. She didn't sing with us much at all. Okay. Especially when we went out and, you know, sang for money. Sister Susie, also a professional singer, would later sing backing vocals on albums like 1982's Unlimited. Correct. Fact. That is fact. Okay, great. Uh, moving along. In college, McIntyre would sneak into local dances at the Oklahoma-Texas border so she could dance to the music of Bob Wills, saying, quote, it didn't get any better than dancing to Bob, Mil Bob Wills' mu uh, music. Fact. All Fact. Well, they quoted you. An accurate quote on Wikipedia. Those are rare yeah. to come by. <laughs> oh, Western Swing, that's the greatest dance music in the world. You bet. In nineteen, But I didn't sneak. That's, that's fiction. I did pay to get in. Okay. Okay. Was the Oklahoma-Texas border, was there a structure there, or did he just play It's on called the Arnold's Club. That's All right. where I went. Well, I was really in, in college because we'd go down there from college and, and party, right. and I'd get up and sing every once in a while and then dance. I so, okay. well, I guess that's fiction man not very hmm. good wiki okay in 1977 Re mercury released mcintyre's self-titled debut album the album was a departure from any of mcintyre's future releases as it resembled the music of tanya tucker and tammy wynette really i'm not sure how to take that i don't know either I, i've never heard that before i'm gonna say fiction okay fiction okay. on that um first album was in 77 though first <laughs> single was 76 singing background vocals on the reba mcintyre album was future female vocalist of the year janie fricky fiction not true no okay why would she sing harmony on my albums she's bigger than i was when i was coming up no i don't think that's right no, fiction not, not being back okay great um in 1976 mcintyre made two albums listed under the genre of urban cowboy instead of country fiction all country all, all fiction um do you have any idea which albums they might be referring to no because the <laughs> urban cowboy didn't come out until 83 <laughs> And my first album, you say in, in 76? In 19, well, I don't say. No, did Wikipedia, Wikipedia say 76? Wikipedia says 76. No, incorrect. Okay, Fiction. incorrect. Take that, Wiki. Yeah, Wiki. <laughs> oh, in 1988, uh, McIntyre released the Reba album. The title was meant to signify that she had become so well-known she could be identified by first name alone. Fiction. 
I just got tired of singing, signing McIntyre all the time. We just wanted to have something different. <laughs> now, just be something different. In 1993, McIntyre wore a red dress with a plunging neckline to the CMA Awards. She wore it during a performance with Linda Davis, later, later saying, I got more press off that dress than if I'd won Entertainer of the Year. Uh, fact, I thought that was 94. It could be 93. The dress was designed by Sandy Spica, now married to Big Machine Label Group CEO and your boss, Scott Borchetta. Sandy Spica Spica. did make it, so that's fact. The dress had, now this is an odd one. The dress had a lasting influence and was even worn by men to her future shows in fancy dress. Not that dress. Influence, oh, that's what it said, uh, fiction. Fiction. Nope. I'd a like similar to see dress? a man get that dress on. <laughs> is a similar what, dress is and that one that was made to copy it? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. But that is that actually. what it said, similar? No, it says a that copy. dress. No, fiction. Okay, fiction. Sorry. That's been in my possession except for the Country Music Hall of Fame and nobody could. No man has nobody, ever put that on. No man would. I would not let a man put that on. It'd be a small man. Well. Uh, 1996, Rebel McIntyre was cast by director James Cameron. Uh, as Molly Brown in the movie Titanic. However, when it became apparent, production for the film would extend well beyond uh, the original length. McIntyre had to turn down the part. Uh, Fiction. Well, fiction. I turned it down because they kept moving my schedule, and we had arenas booked. And then I had, you know, 75 people on payroll out there, and we were doing concerts, 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 three or four a weekend. And they would say, okay, we need you for these three months. And we said, okay. So it's probably it's pretty much telling everybody Reba's going to be gone for these three months. And then they say, oh, not these three months, these three months. Well, the arenas were getting booked up, mm. and we were promoting ourselves right. and our own shows. And so finally, I just had to say, guys, this is not working, and yeah. I pulled out. McIntyre is set to release her 27th studio album on April 14th, 2015. It's called Love Somebody and features a duet with Jennifer Nettles called Enough. Fact. Can you tell me a little about that song? Sure, yeah. Jennifer Nettles and I get to sing this song, and it's a, almost a remake of Does He Love You from 94. Here we are in 2015 doing another song with the same subject matter, and I'm doing it instead of Linda Davis with Jennifer Nettles. I'd say about 50-50 in the fact fiction. Yeah, pretty good. Not too bad. Not yeah. too, too much yeah. embarrassing stuff that you need to edit, very I good. don't think. Thank you very much. You're fine. Thank you.